Hey guys, Sock here from Sock e Ticket. In today's video, we are going to be sharing the first 13 things to do on your brand new iPhone 13 or the iPhone 13 mini. These tips, tricks, and features are going to make sure you have a great setup and also maximize your ownership. So let's dive in and get started right away with number one. So the very first thing you want to do is you want to go to your settings and then you want to scroll down just a little bit until you see the battery. So when you click on the battery, the first thing you want to do is you want to tap on the battery health and once you go to the battery health you want to make sure the maximum capacity here says a hundred percent if you just got the phone and it says 99 percent that's a problem even though that's not a bad number that means somehow that battery is used so on a brand new iPhone this should say hundred percent and this one should say peak performance capability now if you buy a used phone and it says 90 percent that's not a huge deal but if it's a brand new phone at 90 percent you want to return that and get a brand new one so while we're here the next thing you want to do over here is you want to make sure this option is in fact enabled okay uh, but some people want to disable it so if you enable this, the charging speed is going to be a little bit slower, but it's also going to extend the battery life of your phone over the length of your ownership. But if you disable this, let me tap over here and click on turn off. What's going to happen is the phone is in fact going to charge a little bit faster. So once the phone reaches 80%, it continues to charge faster. But if you have this enabled, once the phone reaches 80% charge, it starts to charge slowly and believe it or not that gives you a battery extension in the future so those two settings you want to check right away the next thing you want to do over here in the main setting is to turn off the auto brightness feature on your phone so if I scroll down a little bit if I go to my display and brightness you'll see we have a brightness slider here but we don't have the automatic brightness on and off toggle for some reason it is hidden so what you want to do is you want to go back to settings you want to scroll down a little bit, go to accessibility, go to display and text size, and at the bottom, you want to make sure auto brightness is in fact turned off. Now, when you enable this, the phone manages the auto brightness automatically, which could be good for some people, but more, more people prefer manual control. So turn this off. It is turned on by default. And while you're here, one more thing you want to quickly change, just go up. And you can see I have the bold text enabled. If you disable this, it's going to be a little bit thinner text. It's easy and nicer for me to look at it this way. It's nice, clean, and bold, easy to see. All right, let's move on. Now, the next setting you want to tweak is going to be, again, under display. And this one is known as raise to wake feature. You want to make sure this is enabled if you want this option. So if I turn this off, Let's say I got a text message. I'm going to quickly glance at my phone. All I do is I raise and it wakes. I can look at it. If it's nothing special, I can put it away. No problem. Now, if you want to save some battery life, because every time you do raise the wake, it turns on the screen and your battery gets a hit. If you want to save a little bit battery life, turn it off. This time, when you raise, it's not going to wake. But it's not a big deal because you can tap it if you so desire. Some people just like to have race to wake. So let me go inside, turn it on for now, and let's move on. And of course, one more thing a lot of people don't pay attention to is the auto lock feature. Make sure this one is at 30 seconds or one minute so the phone actually turns off after one minute of inactivity. When I say it turns off, it means the screen goes off. If you have it at five minutes, four minutes, the screen is going to remain on and it's going to continue to waste your battery. Now, one more battery related feature. If you go back over here and if you go to sounds and haptics, what you want to do is you want to disable vibrate on ring. The reason you want to disable this is because the vibration engine actually wastes some battery. So when the phone is ringing, you can hear the call. So you don't need it to be vibrating. That way you're going to save some battery life but you can keep this one enabled so when the phone is silent and somebody calls you and sends you a message, then the phone vibrates, which makes sense. So that's the setup I prefer to have. Now the next thing I wanna talk about is the extract text feature. So here's a photo right over here and there's some text on that photo. I'm in Safari, so there's a couple ways to do this. I'm gonna show you all the different ways. 
So when you're in Safari, you're looking at a photo anywhere, you can press and hold and you can simply say show text. That's going to open up a new window and it's going to select the text portion of that image. So look at this. I can click this, check, uncheck. Now, if I want to actually copy that text, all I do is press and hold and select the area that I want to actually copy. So you can copy this and I can paste it anywhere that I want. So that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is simply go straight onto the text and press down. Look at that. I can start to select the text. I don't have to have the whole photo for this quote. I can just get the actual text and I can resize it using these cursors, copy, look up, translate, share, whatever. That's another way to do it. And the final way to do it is if I download photos, let's say you are in a classroom and you are taking a photo from a whiteboard. And let's say just let's just assume this is the whiteboard. The teacher wrote some stuff. You take a photo and once you have the photo, all you do is again, press and hold. Once you do that, you can start to select the text on that photo or again, look at this. Let me go back in here. You can click this guy and it will select it for you. Okay. And then you can press and hold to modify the selection area. Fantastic little feature, works like a charm. Now let's talk about the security of your phone. It's very important to secure the phone properly. So first you want to go to your settings. You want to scroll down a little bit. You want to go to face ID and passcode, dump in your password. And then make sure all these options are enabled so you can use your face ID to unlock your phone, make purchases on iTunes, pay with Apple Pay, and autofill password when necessary. But these are just the basic stuff. Now here's the important stuff at the bottom. Require attention for face ID and attention aware features must be enabled. Let's say you're asleep and somebody grabs your phone. Maybe your girlfriend grabs your phone to see who you have been texting that day. So they can simply hold the phone to your face and get it unlocked if this is disabled. Okay? If this is enabled, your eyes have to open and you have to be looking at the sensor. With this disabled, your eyes could be closed, you could be looking somewhere else, and somebody can unlock your phone using your face if you're taking a nap. So make sure these are enabled and also make sure you set up an alternate appearance. So maybe you wear a wig, maybe you wear sunglasses, maybe you wear a mask. Uh, you can actually, for example, wear a mask and set an alternate appearance so the phone gets unlocked easier when you're on the go on the outside. And then we have something very important at the bottom right here. It says allow access when locked. So when the phone is locked right now, anybody can access all these features on your phone. Let me turn off the phone so you can see what I'm talking about. So if I'm right over here, if I had any notifications, they would appear right here. I can pull down the control center. I can make modifications to anything here which could mess up something in the house or with your phone. So look, I can modify my home settings. I can turn on and off my Bluetooth and all that stuff. You don't want to make sure those things are enabled. So let's go inside, go back to the bottom here and make sure all these guys are disabled so nobody can access any aspect of your phone when the phone is actually locked. They don't have to be able to reply with a message. They don't need home control. They do not have need to access your wallet. So make sure the phone is fully secure. Okay, let's move on. The next thing you want to do is you want to set up restrictions on your phone. Let's say you're giving your phone away to people all the time. You want to make sure you restrict access to certain parts of the phone so people don't mess up your phone or make purchases accidentally. So what you want to do is you want to go into should be somewhere here, screen time, okay? And then you want to scroll down and you want to go into content and privacy restrictions. When you access this area for the first time, it may ask you to actually set up a passcode. Do that. It can be a different passcode than your lock screen passcode. So once you have the passcode set up, let's say I want to disable some applications. So I go to allowed apps. I'm going to put in my passcode and then I can disable access to all these applications. So when I go outside right now, you can see Safari is here, the camera is accessible and all that stuff. When I go back in here, okay, and let me just dump that again. 
When I disable access to these applications and these options, those apps will disappear from the home screen. So there's no camera here, there's no Safari, it has been banned from use if you're giving your phone away to somebody, maybe your kid. You don't want them to go to all, all over the phone and mess it up. So go back here. For now, let me just enable everything. And with this one here, they can't even go to the iTunes store and make a purchase and maybe accidentally waste your money. Now, in relation to that, here's one thing that's very important. iTunes and App Store purchases. First, do you want other people to be able to install applications? No, when you give it to them. Do you want people having access to delete your applications? No. So now people cannot even go out here, press and hold, and actually delete applications. That option has been taken away. Let me go back in here. And then finally, the big thing that I like is in-app purchases don't allow. If you allow this and you give your phone to somebody, a friend or your kid, and they're playing a game, they might accidentally do in-app purchases and again, waste your money. In fact, you might want to just disable this to save yourself some money because sometimes we excessively buy stuff in the application. So these are the app restrictions. You want to make sure that they are properly set up or at least set them up as you give it away. Now, one more thing I want to show you here that's very cool is you don't want to be on social media all the time. So go to app limits and make sure you add some limits to certain social media applications. So tap on social and then click on next and just say, I'm gonna be on social media for one hour today, no more. One hour every day, you click on add. Now the limit has been added. So when you try to access those applications beyond the one hour allowed, the phone is gonna restrict you. You can override it, but at least it's there to remind you, hey, relax, let's move on. The next thing you wanna make sure it is in fact toggled on is go to your settings, okay, go to the main screen, go to general, and go into iPhone storage. Now once you're in your iPhone storage, if you see this option, enable it. This basically offloads unused applications. So if you haven't used an application for days, weeks, or months, after you installed it, the phone is gonna learn, and after a while, it's going to offload that application and that's gonna give you more space for your photos, videos, or other apps you're using at the time. So great little option to play with, all right? The next thing you're gonna be using all the time is your control center. So you wanna make sure you customize it properly. Now this top part here, one, two, three, you cannot customize, but the remainder is fully customizable. But these guys can, you can press and hold and expand them further to get more details, just so you know. So you can expand and hold, and it's slider right there, so that's great. You can access relevant settings. If you press a flashlight, you can change the intensity of that flashlight from here, okay? So that's that, but let's customize this. So you wanna go to your settings, and you want to go into Control Center. You click it, and if you wanna add a control to your Control Center, you just click plus here. Let's just add a bunch so you can see the difference. Okay, now when I pull this down, I've got many more toggles here. So make sure you go in and add the toggle that you want. And also, if there's important toggles you're gonna use all the time, you can grab that and you can put it to the top. Okay, to grab it, press the side and just put it at the top. And now look at this, timer and stopwatch, they're gonna be right here for easy access. So that's great. Now I'm assuming you're gonna be using your camera a lot, so when you do launch the camera, you can switch between modes from here, but you cannot access the camera settings from the camera application. So you do wanna to go to your settings, okay, to the main screen, scroll down all the way to the camera, and your camera settings and configurations are gonna be here. Make some basic modifications, go to record video, make sure you have it at 1080p at 60, that's the standard, takes less space, and it's very smooth video. If you wanna do 4K, you can choose it from here. You can enable or disable HDR video, which I recommend most people simply disable. And then, just make sure you enable the grid over here, so when you go into your camera application, you have these grid lines for better composition, but then you're good to go. And one more thing, if you do go to video over here, on the top, you can change the definition from 4K to 1080p, 
and also the FPS. So 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second, right from the top here, just so you know. Now, privacy is very important. You want to make sure you know what's happening with your phone, with the applications you download. So always go to your settings. Go to the main screen right here. And then scroll down and go into privacy. So here is the main components on your phone. And you can see what applications are able to access, for example, your camera, your microphone, your Bluetooth. So when you click it, it'll list all the applications here that have access to your camera. You can click on it and you can make modifications and also read descriptions. Now this is a stock app, no big deal, but you're gonna see a lot of apps here slowly. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, they're gonna show up right here, okay? And they're gonna be here as well under microphone. So you wanna make sure you manage your privacy properly by being vigilant about the apps and how they track your data. All right, so that brings us to the end of the video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop them down below. Let me know for now, guys. Have a fantastic day, all right?